morning everyone i have three scenes to share with you all three involving the sense of touch you can see the baby responding to the soft touch of his mother or the snail responding to the touch of this person right now both of them are responding because we know both humans as well as animals have a nervous system but how do we explain the plant's response to touch do plants have a nervous system well at our level the answer is no but Recent research shows that plants can communicate using their own nervous system, which presently is not in our syllabus. So let's go to another question. Earlier, I told you that for human growth to occur, we need hormones. So then, plants also grow. And that would mean plants have hormones. Now, this is in our syllabus. So, in our syllabus, we are going to learn to explain the roles of plant hormones in growth and development. This video will involve the introduction to plant hormones, also known as phyto. Hormones. Now we've learned before that humans have hormones that are synthesized by the endocrine gland located at specific places in our body. So what about plants? Do they have specific endocrine glands? Answer is no. Plants actually can synthesize hormone almost everywhere. Parts that synthesize hormone include the shoot of the plant, the young leaves of plants, the root of the plant, the flowers of the plant, the fruits of the plant, and even the seed in the plant. So like I said, almost every part of the plant can synthesize hormones. Then we need to understand how are these hormones transported in plants. In humans, we've learned that the hormone is transported by blood to the target organ. What about plants? They use their transport system known as the vascular system. The hormones can be transported via the phloem sap through the phloem, that is the sieve tube. It can also be transported by water through the xylem involving xylem vessels and tracheids. Or if the site of synthesis and the target cell is close by, then the hormones just directly diffuse from cell to cell. Let's move on to the, the third introduction is related to the general function of hormones. From the moment we plant a seed, to germination and plant growth, hormones are involved. Hormones are necessary for cell division, such as mitosis, for pattern of growth. There are times when the plant will grow very fast, and then like during seasons of uh, fall, autumn, or winter, the plants will grow slower. So this will be controlled by hormones development, that is for the plant to start developing flowers or fruits will involve hormones. Maturation, for the plant to become mature, for the plant to be ready for double fertilization, 
also will require hormones, as well as the plant's response to environmental conditions. So, for example, when I showed you the animation involving the finger touching the mimosa plant and the mimosa plant closing its leaves is actually a response to the environmental condition controlled by hormones. So now that you know quite a number of things about the phytohormones, let's look at the names of these hormones. There may be many hormones, but in our syllabus, we only discuss five. The first is auxin, second, cytokinin, and the third is gibberellin. These three hormones keep the plant young, vibrant, and alive. There's another two hormones that is known as abscisic acid and Ethane. These two hormones actually age the plant. So when a plant is going to uh, bear fruit or actually going to die, it will have higher concentrations of abscisic acid and ethane. Next, I'm going to show you individual functions of these hormones. This is the summary of what we will be learning in the coming videos. First, let's look at the stages of plant development from seed to adult. When we plant a seed and a new shoot starts to grow, we call that germination. Once the plant has germinated, it will start to develop which involves growing up to maturity. And we know the plant is matured the moment it starts to flower. And once flowering occurs, pollination and double fertilization will follow so that fruit forms. So the fruits will fall off, the flower will fall off, and the leaf will fall off. That stage is known as abscission. And then from the fruits, there will be seeds. And these seeds are not growing yet. We can store these seeds. This will be seed dormancy. So generally, the stages of plant development can be divided into these six categories. Now we look at the five hormones. Gibberellin, auxin, and cytokinin, as I mentioned earlier, are hormones that keep the plant young. Ethylene and abscisic acid are hormones that make the plant older or die. Okay, so we start with the first stage that is germination. Germination requires one hormone that is gibberellin. Quite easy to remember because G for germination, G for gibberellin. So there is only one hormone for the first stage. The second stage that involves growing right up to maturity involves all three young hormones. That is gibberellin, auxin and cytokinin. But usually the focus will be on the hormone auxin. Meaning that when you are preparing for essay questions, you, not, you do not necessarily have to remember all three hormones. It would be sufficient if you can remember the role of auxin in growth and maturity. Now for the plant to move to the stage of flowering, you find it involves four hormones whereby ethylene is included. Ethylene, also known as ethane, is the same uh, hormone. Ethane is specifically important for the flower to bloom. So that is why when discussing flowering, the main hormone will be ethane. Fruit development also involves this four hormone, where once again it involves ethane. 
because these stages are when the plant is growing to be older. So in our essay discussions, we will usually focus the role of ethane here. When coming to abscission, from the name you can guess, it involves abscisic acid. See the word ABS here and ABS here. So abscission is controlled by abscisic acid. Of course, ethane is involved, but as I mentioned in essay writing, the focus will be on abscisic acid. And seed dormancy also involves abscisic acid. So you see, gibberellin and abscisic acid work opposite to one another when it comes to the seed. So if the seed has a lot of gibberellin synthesized, it will germinate. But if the seed has a lot of abscisic acid, then it will not germinate, it will remain dormant. So if you remember in semester one, when we did the experiment involving the mung bean seed, and you were asked to germinate for 24 hours, some of the mung beans did not germinate. The reason is those mung beans will have had a high concentration of abscisic acid. So you can see here that when you are going to write any essay, you have to know the role of gibberellin in germination and the role of abscisic acid in seed dormancy. The role of ethane in flowering as well as fruit development and mainly the role of auxin in growth and maturity with a few points connecting to gibberellin and cytokinin. So this summary that I have given you would actually be sufficient for you to answer objective questions. So in my next videos, I will discuss in specific points, the role of each hormone most suitable for you to answer essay questions. So with that, I'll see you soon in my next video. Bye-bye.